there was a period when you famously invented the poison pill, and it was a period of, of, of mounting tensions, and shareholders, institutions were beginning to have a greater voice in these things. Lay that out in terms well, of... Well, it was the age of the corporate raider. By the early 1980s, we had reached a whole new plateau of hostile takeovers, and there was really very little in the way of defense to them. Uh, a hostile bid had to be open for 10 days, huge pressure on the shareholders to accept, huge pressure on the management to try and find something to cope with it, a situation that was totally unfair and struggling over the 1970s uh, into the early 1980s, I kept probing to find something that would be useful not in preventing hostile takeovers, but giving the board of directors of a target company an opportunity to level the playing field and have time to make a rational business judgment decision as to how to deal with a takeover. Through that period, there was a paradigm shift to a, a more sort of monolithic shareholder model. Now we call it shareholder democracy. Uh, what years was, was, did that take place and what was going on there? When did you first notice that, that, that uh, this thing was changing in a dramatic and sort of, you know, dramatic fashion? Uh, the change basically I would date to 1979 and the reason why I date it to 1979 is because in that year I wrote an article, uh, Takeover Bids in the Target's Boardroom, where I argued that both law and practicality required a stakeholder approach or a consti constituency approach uh, to the obligation of directors when they're considering a hostile takeover bid. And indeed, my position was ridiculed in academia that uh, almost every economics and uh, law professor who focused on the area uh, argued against it. Ultimately, in 1985, it was accepted by the Delaware Supreme Court in both the household case and in the Unical case. 